Hey friends, today we're making a cute harvest sign with a blue truck and a pumpkin patch on the back. Guys, my name is Tracy. I love to share crafty ideas with a bit of rustic country charm, just like today's projects. If you are not currently subscribed, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button as well as the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. All right, let's get started. Okay, we're going to uh, paint up this truck and make it really cute. Now this blue truck pumpkin ribbons from Michaels is the inspiration for the truck. So these are all of the uh, paints that I'm going to be using as well as um, using some tools, my um, spatula and my knife to get off the hubcaps and all of the wooden stuff on that truck. Um, I'm also using my heat tool to heat up the glue just to get things off a little bit better so that I can paint everything. And to my surprise, this has never ever happened to me ever, but oh, like the top layer of the truck peeled off. It is what it is. This is the only one that I had, so I just had to go with it. Everything worked out fine. Uh, anyway, so I just gave this truck two coats of this primary blue Americana paint. For the pumpkins, I'm using this Spiced Pumpkin Americana Acrylic Paint and I just painted those up. Not doing anything special, just gave them two coats of Spiced Pumpkin Orange Paint. For the hubcaps, I'm just using this metallic silver paint. It is my favorite and my usual go-to. I just found this at the craft store. And uh, for my wheels or my tires, uh, I just penciled out kind of how I thought that the wheels, uh, you know, how round they were. And then um, I'm just painting those black. Now to enhance my project I do like to do some shading and I am so grateful that so many sweet friends love this type of painting guys the Lord has just really blessed me with the most wonderful community and I just um, appreciate and I'm so thankful for all of your sweet and kind comments um, to shade my projects I use a half inch flat paintbrush and I dip half of the brush in paint the other half in clean water and then I blend on a paper towel and then I just kind of go around the edges and um, you know just to enhance my projects I really feel you will hear me say this over and over the beauty is in the details and I do add a lot of details to my painted projects and I do appreciate so many uh, people noticing that and complimenting me on that but nothing is of myself everything is gifts from the Lord and I am so honored that you're here and so grateful that I'm able to share them with you. I'm not going to worry about putting any shading or anything right there because I'm going to be putting on some more pumpkins to add to my pumpkin patch on the back of this truck. I wanted my fenders to be uh, the scrapbook paper so that's why I took all of the uh, you know extra things off of this truck. So I just have just some orange and white gingham paper from the craft store and uh, I just you know traced it out of this scrapbook paper I made sure uh, since this is a pattern uh, scrapbook paper I made sure that my um, patterns were the same meaning I traced them out uh, at the same time one on one on top of the other you know uh, so that they would be the same since it's a pattern because I'm not gonna lie I have been known to trace things out of scrapbook paper like these little 
uh, truck fenders and my patterns were off and a sweet viewer pointed it out and I didn't even realize it <laughs> until uh, someone pointed it out. So now I make a conscious effort to make sure that my paper is lined up the same way. If it's a color, it's not any different. But if you have a pattern uh, and you're doing something that, you know, you want your, pa uh, your, you know, both of your, whatever you're doing, you want it to be the same pattern. So anyway, I just took my little filing, um, just my little emery board and just sanded off any of the extra that was, you know, of this paper that was on this. Oh, and how I attached it is just with my adhesive tape glider. It's just double-sided tape. And uh, so then I have my vintage photo distressing ink and I just go around the edges just to give it some more depth, depth and dimension. So then now I'm just taking my fine Sharpie marker and just going around the edges just to kind of outline it and bring out, uh, you know, just kind of make my projects pop. Um, if you have been with me for a while, you may have seen me do this, but for anyone who is new, that's the reason why I do that because I love to bring out uh, my projects. Okay, so then now I'm gonna add another layer and I love to doodle, I love to highlight. Uh, again, the beauty is in the details and so I love to add these uh, type of squiggles and doodles and everything to my projects because I really feel that this is what makes your project pop, sets it apart from anything else that you may just buy in the store and make it your own. The next layer I'm going to do is add some splattering. This is my favorite uh, technique to do for my projects, especially my painted projects. Um, what I, do, I have is a stiff stencil brush and just a, a craft stick and I splatter black on first and then I go back over it with the white and what I'm doing is I'm just running over the bristles pulling the stick toward my body so that the paint will project on to my painted project okay so then now I'm going to add some uh, like some lights and like the bumper and that kind of thing and so I'm using that same metallic silver paint and I just take just a thin liner brush and just go like in the front where like I think the lights would be as well as the bumper and just kind of give it you know extra enhancements and also extra details. Now I'm going to glue everything down and I'm using my Fabri-Tac glue as well as some hot glue. Uh, the Fabri-Tac is the permanent hold and then the hot glue is the instant hold. I'm using some clips that I get from the Dollar Tree just to hold things down while they're, you know, while they completely dry. And so I love, you know, just using my little clips like this uh, to you know, hold things down because I don't want them to pop off. For my sign, I'm using um, one of these small little jagged signs that I got from Amazon. I will have a link for it in the description box below if you're interested. Now to, uh, I base coated uh, the sign with just some buttermilk Americana paint and uh, then to kind of give it a background, I'm using my fan brush and some spiced pumpkin orange paint. And so I like to use my fan brush just to uh, give it, you know, just give it a background and just kind of, you know, give it just some character and some cuteness. To shade, I'm using this light cinnamon brown paint. And um, previously you saw that I had two of these little signs that I painted. I went ahead and took advantage of, uh, you know, since I had everything out, I went ahead and painted two of these signs like this, but I'm only using one for this particular project. But what I'm doing now is I'm just taking my um, flat paintbrush and dipping my, uh, or half of my brush in paint, the other half in clean water, then blending on a paper towel 
well. And then I'm just going around at the edges as well as on the side of the painted uh, stripes that I made with my fan brush just to give it some depth and dimension. Okay, guys, I get questions all of the time about my brushes. Now, my favorite brushes are linked in my Amazon store. Uh, they're the one stroke brush set because I just love all the different, um, you know, sizes in there. Uh, to do my hand lettering, I like to use this, especially on this smaller sign like this, I'm using the number two flat paintbrush. It is in the set that I just previously had shown you. And so if this is something that you're interested in, you can get flat paint brushes at any craft store, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, uh, Joann's, Michael's, anywhere that paint brushes are sold, even Dollar Tree has them. Uh, anyway, but if it's, if you don't have access to go to the store, you can find them in my Amazon store. And I have found a free font that is the most similar to this style of font. It is called Gel Dotica. Uh, I will have the link for that as well in the description box below. Um, I do not, you know, have any kind of like training or anything on my lettering only because it's specific to what word I'm spelling out. And so it just kind of just depends on what I'm spelling out will depend on how I kind of shape my letters. Anyway, that gel Dotica font is the closest that I have found to this type of lettering. Uh, anyway, so then now what I'm doing is just taking the end of a paintbrush and just making happy dots, which make me so happy uh, on each end of, uh, or on the ends of each letter. Now I'm giving it a coat of the black splattering just with my stiff brush and my uh, wooden stick. And then I'll go back over it with uh, the buttermilk paint, the same um, paint that I had used for the uh, coating the sign. And then I'm using my fine Sharpie marker just to add some outline to the uh, sign. I don't care that my lines are straight. I don't want them to be, I want it to look whimsical. And then I'll go back uh, with the extra layer and do uh, my ultra fine Sharpie marker. I like to, on my signs, especially around letters, I like to add uh, this ultra fine Sharpie marker look. I really feel that it kind of makes it pop. And then um, extra, um, I just take my liner brush and just highlight the happy dots just to make the letters pop. Now I have this circle sign that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just using my heat tool just to get off that sticker and uh, the scrapbook paper I'm not quite sure where I where I got it from probably Hobby Lobby or Michaels maybe Joann's uh, anyway so I just cut out this circle and then to attach it I just used my uh, adhesive tape you could also Mod Podge um, I just did not have my Mod Podge handy so so I just kind of used what I had and then I seal everything with my varnish sealer that you always see me use in my painted projects. Okay, so then uh, to add a bit of depth, I'm just using my vintage photo uh, ink and my finger dauber just going around that. Then I realized that, oh, there's a little paper that needs to be taken off. So I just use my sanding uh, emery board to go around and it wasn't kind of coming off quite as well as I would like it to. So I got out my trusty sander also from the Dollar Tree just to get off more of that paper because it was just taking too long. So it's good to have tools and I'm a tool junkie as well as a craft junkie. So it's great to have all of these different tools that we can use for our projects. Just to give it some doodling, I'm using the same Americana buttermilk paint and just going around the edge of my circle just to give it some highlight and some, you know, cuteness. And then once that paint dries, I'll go back uh, around it and add my fine Sharpie marker just to give it uh, some 
uh, outline. To decorate my truck and to add, uh, you know, some cuteness for the pumpkin patch, I'm using this decorative excelsior that I get from Joann's Craft Store, as well as these uh, small miniature pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. Now I have just some, you know, regular orange as uh, well as some off-white and some glittery uh, orange. And so uh, to add something for my pumpkins and stuff to stick into. I'm just cutting off uh, some pieces of styrofoam, cutting those down to size, and then I'm gonna glue these onto the truck and I use that same blue color. Uh, it is primary blue Americana to paint the styrofoam so that it matches the truck. And uh, then once that's dried, then I'll go and glue the Excelsior Excelsior on the truck and that way the styrofoam uh, is what I will use to stick my pumpkins and my greenery in. This greenery is something that I had in my stash. I'm not quite sure where I got it from, uh, but uh, it's perfect for little projects like this. So I just cut off, you know, just little strips of it and just stuck it straight and glued it into that styrofoam. So then uh, to add some dimension for my truck before I attach it to the sign, I'm just using some tumbling tower blocks and just using some... Uh, antique wax and a baby wipe and I'm just you know giving some color to the tumbling tower blocks and then I'm going to glue those to the back of the truck as well as the sign to make it pop and make it stand up and give it some dimension. And as I was putting uh, my truck on there, I was like, I need some small like pieces of the Jenga blocks to adhere to the top of the truck. So I pulled out my mini table miter saw. Now I got this a couple of years ago off of Amazon and I just checked um, and it says it's currently unavailable so I'm not even going to link it or anything. I think some people are finding these at Harbor Freight or maybe other like home improvement stores but there it's just a tiny saw a little tabletop saw that you can cut small wood items or small things like this so just sharing what I did so I just put some of the small blocks behind the top of the truck so that everything was dimensional um, I also just hand painted a, a small sign from the Dollar Tree and um, hand lettered pumpkins for sale and attached it to the side of the truck all right, guys, this is how this sign turned out. I am going to be using this in a wreath uh, because that's what I do. Uh, I do design wreaths and sell them locally in my hometown. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. God bless. Mm -hmm.